And uh, today we have the 2020 BMW X6M competition and a very loud plane above us. As you can see, I tried to match my shirt to the color of this vehicle, but I failed because, well, this is sort of a maroon and this is what BMW calls a Mitran metallic, or as I like to call it, ugly. It's, it's like a plum and I don't think anyone would make a shirt this ugly. Why they would make a car in that color, I'm not quite sure. But we have it today. So we're gonna answer some of your questions and keep in mind that we've got the walk around and the POV drive for this video. The walk around is already up. I posted it at like 6 a.m. this morning, so like four hours ago. And the POV drive is gonna go live tomorrow at 6 a.m. So if you just want those, you don't want the live Q&A, well, why are you watching this? But you can watch those at any time on my channel. Walk around's up, POV tomorrow. All right, let's hit it up with the first question. How do you feel about the X6 styling? Do the black trim pieces help the front fascia design? Okay, X6 styling, do the black trim pieces help the fascia? I think to answer it in a reverse question, I think the black trim pieces do help, uh, certainly like this grill up here, which is like all BMW grills now, you know, it started with the new 7 Series and then the X7 and then, you know, it's making its way down to other vehicles. It's huge and I am a big fan of the original BMW Little Kidney Grill, uh, but they just keep making it bigger, and I guess big grills are kind of the thing. Have you seen the GMC Sierra? It's mostly grill. Uh, but I, I think the black trim pieces help tone that down a little bit. So we got black trim up there. Um, I think this is always black, but black trim pieces down here and around the air intakes, um, air dams rather, and uh, black trim on the uh, M, Flourishment on the side here, black door mirrors, black window trim, and uh, black lip spoiler, and then a black diffuser down here. Ooh, and blacked out quad exhaust ports. Who could forget that? Uh, but okay, so that's, I think the black trim helps. Do I like the X6 styling in general? No, I don't. Uh, I don't really like in general the uh the crossover coupe suv coupe whatever you want to call it design i think suvs looked fine in their boxier versions uh why we need to make them look like coupes i don't really know some people don't like it and that's fine um i would prefer the x5 over the x6 and indeed the x5m over the x6m and the X5M competition over the X6M competition, you get the idea. Sorry for all the planes. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the X6 styling, and I think this this is the fourth generation X6, it's the third generation X6M, and I think I actually liked the first generation X6 better. But one thing that hasn't changed after all this time is, and this is probably where my like focus of displeasure comes with the X6, there's just so much body here. It's a big arse, okay? It's just a big arse, and I don't, I don't like that personally. So yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of the styling. Next up, you have a viewer who agrees with you. All right, Swan. But how strong is it in snow? Blake asked that question, by the way. Um, how strong is it in snow? Well, it has all-wheel drive, so it's going to be better than a front-wheel drive or real-wheel drive car, but. I have to stop myself every time when I get these questions about the snow because I want to go into a rant about winter tires and how critical those are to a vehicle. Uh, Christina's shaking her head right now because I do this every time. But winter tires are going to be better than an all-wheel drive system just if you're going to be comparing, oh, I'm just going to get a vehicle with all-season tires and all-wheel drive or a vehicle that's either front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive with winter tires. The winter tires are going to be the way to go. So. I would not concern yourself with winter performance with the X6M. Um, maybe concern yourself if you're gonna leave on these summer tires through the winter. Yeah, you probably wanna get uh, winter, winter tires for that. But it'll be fine in the snow because it's got all-wheel drive. So, what's up? Rev it and what's the zero to 200 miles per hour time? Okay, I'll rev it. I can't do the zero to 200 miles per hour time because it only goes to 177, so. Maybe the time is infinite because it's never going to get there, but I'll rev it. Go around to the back mm -hmm. and I'll rev it up.
I'm not sure whether if I let the vehicle warm up much more, it would let me rev higher. Right now, I'm only getting to like 4,800 RPM, and the rev limit is, I gotta check this, appears to be about 6,200, 6,300 RPM. So, you're not hearing the peak performance of the vehicle, uh, that's only 4,800 RPM. But, let's just leave the car idling, and I'll try revving it again a little later. But, in the meantime, what's another question? Blake thinks that sounds pretty good. All right. Does it have twin turbo? Yes, it does have twin turbo. It's a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. And the regular X6M makes 600 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. The X6M competition makes an additional 17 horsepower. So 617 horsepower. And at that point you're getting real close to like Lamborghini Urus territory. It's cool. Sound check. Sound check. You're hearing it. You can check that it makes a sound. Uh, and I will again rev it a little bit later. What vacation would you like more? Beach or mountains? Oh, all right, curveball. Uh, I'm gonna go with mountains. I'm a mountain person. I've got a 94 80 series Land Cruiser that my wife and I take to the mountains as much as possible. Though right now in quarantine, we are of course observing that, so we're not going out. And I just built a platform for my Land Cruiser for my Rhodesian Rid Ridgeback to ride in the car with us. Mountains. What is your favorite car? Ooh, favorite car. The Ford GT. And that, that's such a difficult question to ask, obviously, a person who likes cars, because they're from all eras and all, I mean, all, all different, you know, American cars, European cars, uh, Japanese cars. There are just so many different types, and it's a really difficult question to answer. But my gut says Ford GT because when I was, you know, in high school and the Ford GT, came out in 2005 that you know obviously it's it's a, a, a modern interpretation of the GT40 that was racing in the 60s um, if you saw Ford vs Ferrari great movie but this the story is just incredible um, anyway so Ford GT when that was when that was coming out in 2005 uh, when I was in high school I just I fell in love I mean I'd already loved cars before but that one just for whatever reason mid-engine V8 supercharged and it just looked like a, a gorgeous uh, conversion of, of past and modernity it was just a wonderful car i like it even more than the new ford gt so that's my favorite car how is the visibility due to the slanted mush hmm uh the visibility is it's it's uh what you would expect it's not as good as a traditional boxy suv with taller windows and you know, not the, not the slant in the back. There's a little bit of a blind spot, but because this car has, especially this one, has the full suite of driver assistance technologies, you really shouldn't run into a problem. Yes, I, I, I'm the first to say I'm a visibility fan before I am a fan of driver assistance features. I figure if you can see out of the car, then you don't need the driver assistance feature. So uh, that's yet another reason why I would prefer the X5 over the X6 visibility. Is it faster than a Mercedes GLE 63S? Yeah, uh, you're probably thinking of the GLE 63 uh, or the GLE Coupe 63S or whatever. GLE 63S Coupe. Gosh, we've got a lot of points today. Um, is it faster than that? Uh, numbers wise, the XXM competition makes 10 more horsepower than the 63S. 63S makes 607. Zero to 60, it also is slightly faster. I mean, really slightly faster. This is 3.6 to 60. The 63S is 3.7. So objectively, it is faster. And then I would even argue uh, in the corners, this is gonna be faster. They've just, BMW does, has done so much to the driving dynamics of this vehicle. It behaves genuinely like a sedan on a track or an aggressive uh, road. So that's, yeah, that's my thoughts. I think it's faster, yes. What's something you could fit into the X5M that you couldn't fit into the X6M? Hmm, mm, that is a good question. Um, so here's the thing, okay, I've been having problems with this trunk like every day. Uh, the thing about the X6M is what you're sacrificing is height here, the height of what you'd be able to stow in the back. So yes, there's this under tray storage where you can put some stuff and you can even store the, uh, the cargo cover. 
But if you want to be moving furniture, which I don't know how often you'd be doing in your X5 or XM, you, you can afford this. You probably can afford someone to move it for you. But uh, in terms of furniture, you can fit something long. I think this has 38 cubic feet of cargo space and the X5 with the seats folded has 62, I think. Um, but has 22 behind the second row seats. Anyway, cargo or like uh, cubic feet doesn't really matter. It, what I'm talking about here is height of what you'd be able to fit in. So if you have a long piece of furniture, it's gonna fit just as well in the X5 as the X6. But if you've got something boxy, blocky, uh, this is all the, uh, that's all the height you're gonna be able to fit. So if you've got something with long legs, good luck. Uh, but I think certainly with the X5, the more traditional boxy SUV styling, you'll be able to fit more in it and more easily as well, not worrying about scraping anything up here. Okay, you have a viewer who would like to see the interior. Interior, okay. So this is one of the biggest updates for 2020 is just BMW did a lot of work to refine the interior. And it's kind of funny because we were just in the GLB, which had this sort of black and white duotone thing, which I don't love. But on here, it looks a little better because it's got, you know, some detailing on the seats themselves, um, you know, a, a stitching pattern, perforation of the leather. The leather feels really good in this car. The carbon fiber uh, trim pieces here on the dashboard and then in the center stack look excellent, very high quality. You got the X6M competition badge um, right there. And then BMW's latest version of its iDrive uh, infotainment system and a fully digital instrument cluster. These work really, really well. Um, you know, last time we had the GLB and, and the, I think the question came up, you know, what's, what is it the best of the luxury vehicles, the Mercedes-Benz's MBUX system? I still think it probably has a little bit of an edge on the X6M competition, but this is a really good system. It's very quick. I like that you still have the control wheel over there if you wanna do um, inputs via that, or you can touch the screen. Voice commands are pretty good. Um, you can use all of the steering wheel controls to adjust it. It's not as intuitive as MBUX's system where you got you know that touch wheel on the left and right, and it controls the left screen to the right screen, but it is pretty easy to use, and the graphics are awesome. And of course, it's got its M modes with all of your various settings. You've got road, sport, and then track, uh, which is exclusive to the X6M competition is the track mode. And then if you want to set things up more individually, you can have three modes of your engine performance, your chassis, your steering, your braking, and then you can actually have the MX drive uh, system. So that's the four wheel drive system. You can have it need be more rear wheel biased or just its traditional four-wheel drive bias. But yeah, I, lo I love the cabin. I think it's great, certainly for the front passengers. The rear passengers. So here's one thing. Because of its design, uh, this rear door opens fairly wide, but then you've got this sort of awkward, because of the, the aggressive slant there, it's sort of an awkward entry for the rear passengers. When I'm back here, I've got I've got reasonably good room. I've got headroom, six feet tall, and I've got this is my my own driving position. I've got knee space. There's a nice space under the seats. A lot of the these cars really screw it up where they they lower the seats so much, and this seat is all the way lower, um, where there's no space for you to put your feet. So objectively, yes, I could fit, but no one wants to sit like this. They would want to spread out a little bit. So I feel like I've got good space back here. The panoramic sunroof helps a lot to bring in some light. Alcantara headliner trim, that feels great. I'm a tactile person, so this just, this makes my day. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little cabin back here. Not as dark as you might assume for a coupe design. But yeah, that's the interior. Um, just show it to them when I'm not sitting in, in it so they can see. Next question. Put the engine in Sport Plus and rev it again. Okay. Better? 
get better? I hope so. And I, I think someone asked for like the overrun, the burbles, the pops and stuff. This one doesn't give me as many pops as I was getting from like, what was I driving recently? The uh, 850i, the M850i was getting more overrun from that one. This one is just like, it's got a uh, at the end. Would you rather buy the Mercedes GLE 63 or X6M? Okay, so back to the GLE 63. So, you know, we've already discussed whether this is faster than that vehicle. Yes, objectively it is faster. And certainly I think on a road course, it would be faster. Uh, I don't, as I've already said, I don't really like the crossover coupe design. I would prefer the more traditional. So the GLE, the regular GLE, I think they, they probably meant the GLE coupe not the regular GLE versus this. So I'd prefer the X5, not the X6, and I'd prefer the regular GLE, not the GLE 63 Coupe. Um, between the BMW and the Mercedes, I'm more a BMW guy, I think, than I am a Mercedes guy with certain products. I'm not just a brand loyalist. It's, it's like the driving experience of a particular BMW is typically a little better than that of the Mercedes Benz. The Mercedes Benz is more about the sound and, I mean, like it makes a great noise and it goes really quickly. All Mercedes Benz do, but uh, or their AMG products do. But I'm more I'm more the BMW slant. So if you forced me to buy a coupe version of the these cars, I I guess I would go with the X6. All right, your viewer Ali likes that revving better. All right, good. All right, and is there a price difference between this and the X5 M competition? Yes, this car costs I think thirty five hundred dollars more than the X5M competition. So direct compa com comparison right here, the competition to competition, this is gonna cost like $3,500 more. And if you're talking X6M competition versus X6M, regular X6M, this is like $9,800 more. So you're paying for that extra 17 horsepower. And in this case, versus the X5, you're paying for the slanted roof. All right, another viewer asked, where are you from, guy? Where am I from, guy? Um, I am a guy, and I'm from here. This is Southern California. I'm in Orange County. I'm a guy. Did I mention that I'm a guy? All right. You did. And those are all the, the questions that we have right now. All right, that's all the questions we've got. Uh, I think we've covered a, a good amount here with the XXM competition. If you have other questions. Should we drive it a little? Should we drive it? Maybe we'll drive it a little bit. All right, that's how we'll finish out the video. We'll just go for a, go for a quick spin. Sometimes there's fascination with keys. So this is the X6M competition key. You've got the M uh, color palette over here on the side, but apart from that, it's just a regular X6 key. Love that, that badge thing there, that's pretty cool. And that's where the cup holders are. The cup holders, by the way, are heated and cooled. Heated and cooled cup holders, that's fancy. All right, so right now we've got the engine in Sport Plus. Chassis is comfort, steering is comfort, braking is comfort, let's go ahead and change that to sport we got sport braking and I have to go into DSC off which where's the button where's the button for that there it is it's in M dynamic mode now oh it's perky no buts about it this this car is fast I mean it's fast in the way it drinks gasoline uh, because it gets 15 combined mpg that's a that's like terrible uh, it's fast in the way it accelerates as i said 3.7 3.6 seconds to 60 miles per hour that's that's supercar acceleration top speed 177 very quick um, and it just it feels urgent in corners like that this turn in is alert and you get a lot of feedback Yes, it's an electronic steering rack, but you get a lot of, I know what the car is doing, um, despite the fact that I'm getting electronic feedback, not genuine road feel. You have a viewer who likes the paint job, and another one that asked if the exterior paint comes with an extra cost. Oh yeah, this paint, so hey, this is a case for BMW having actually researched and finding that people too like, they probably uh, you know group tested or whatever you call that, uh, where they find out whether people would actually buy this or not. Someone someone likes the color. I'm sure they're not the only person. Someone 
uh, who would buy this car may actually appreciate that it doesn't just look like a regular black or gray or white X6, it's got a different color. Okay, the cost of the paint, so the Ametrin Metallic is the name for the paint, and it's an additional $1,950. So if you like the paint, you're gonna have to pay a little more for it. We keep getting red lights here, so it's hard to show off the performance of the X6M competition, or the sound. You can hear it's pretty quiet in here, and I believe, I believe BMW does patch in some noise. I don't, whether they simulate it through the speakers or whether they are actually piping in real noise, they're doing something to enhance the auditory experience in the X6M competition. Ah, green light, sweet. Traffic, traffic. And the slowest RAV4 on the planet. And people in a blind spot. All right. Shift down a couple gears here, using the paddles. And accelerate. Yeah, it moves. It moves real quick. And this is one of those vehicles, when you're driving on the freeway, and you just feel like, I must be doing 62, 63 miles an hour. You're doing 93. You just, that's just how, not I wasn't doing that right now, but that's that's the sort of general experience that you have with the X6. It's just built for the German Autobahn. It's not built for us with our limited speeds. Uh, M buttons. These are classic for BMW M vehicles. So you can configure these to immediately when you press the button, pipe in whatever your individual settings of all these different variations for performance. You just press the button and it pulls up whatever you programmed it to do. So I programmed the M1 to do like, it's like a very, just basically I just want the maximum engine performance, but I don't want a stiff chassis. I don't want, you know, very too, uh, too sensitive steering or too sensitive braking. The M2 is like full on, I want full control, so I have it in manual mode for the transmission, and I've got pretty much everything at its maximum. So if I were to press M2 right now and hit confirm, now the transmission's in manual. So it even lets me go all the way to the red line, and I have to shift the paddle. It'll just sit there pinging at the red line, um, pinging at the red rev limiter if I don't shift up. Sound bad. Another question. What's yeah. the X6S engine capacity? The engine it's 4.4 liters. But if you're talking about what you could tune it to, I'm not quite sure. Probably tune it to a fair bit of power. Because it's V8. Not going to do too much more driving here. Probably going to wrap up the video shortly. So I'll do just a couple pulls real quick. And if you can see on my digital instrument cluster here, it's giving like there's a closing gap of yellow to red where it wants you to shift up. So here I'll do that. You can see it right in there. Shift up. Okay. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then if I wanted to change the display, I can just go into M mode here and then into sport and it changes how this looks in front of me. All right, we're gonna call it there, folks. Um, last question. Oh, last question, all right. Is the informant display easy to use and its specifications? Uh, the So the instrument cluster is very easy to use, very easy to read. Um, you can't change too much about it. Uh, where like, for example, the MBUX system, you can like, you can change up everything on it. Uh, this, you can't change up too much information. The infotainment is very easy to use and you can change a lot. And it's got a lot of useful information. I also forgot to mention, there's a huge head up display here. Let me grab that for a second, see if you can see it. All right, handing back off, I don't wanna be unsafe. But there's a massive head up display uh, which also has useful information like the post-it speed limit 
Not that you would be doing the posted speed limit because you're in a 617 horsepower SUV, but if you wanted to know what it was, it's there. Uh, yeah, so everything is pretty easy to use, and uh, yeah, it's got some individuality to it. You can customize certain things like the infotainment. All right, we're going to call it there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been the 2020 BMW X6M competition. As I said, the walk around is up on the channel right now. The POV drive will be up tomorrow morning, so check those out if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.